good folks, welcome aboard of another sailing with Kirkgrew.com, Adam Abuso here, and this time it's Northern, since the whole channel is mostly by standards of Northern, and some parts are about all of the existing formats, and on the left side of your screen is just the your stock burn deck modern obviously splashing both white and green the usual thing and the right side of your screen is affinity in my hands and I have very limited experience with this deck though I played a ton against it and really kept track of everything what was going on played affinity in different eras and we're playing this because we want to have a better feeling of the gauntlets and available options before GP Copenhagen. Uh, so, in, so my hand was really bloody slow and as explained by my friend who plays Affinity for years, uh, Affinity Mulligans pretty well so I would rather go down to 6 uh, plus this game was a burn being under play and I simply wanted a faster hand to have a chance in this game right Some legacy videos are coming up soon and more standards as well. But for now, it's modern because people seem to have a good feeling or some sort of hunger for it regarding my channel in the past couple of weeks. So, suspend three fog from him, dark still suited all from me, and just a drum and turn one, nothing else. Really sad to hit such a slow hand. I know, maybe I should have gone down to five on the draw. Just have more things going on quicker. He just laid a last day mine and passed the turn. The friend uh, gonna avoid and just played a signal past and kept some mana open for a galvanic blast in case he would have like an idol on the golden blade I still somehow was flooded with two more dark steel citadels in my hand and I think it was a edge champion or a play thing in my hand So he bores turned me on the turn, already I'm already down to thirteen. He basically balded himself with a fetch plus a shock run, so he's at seventeen. But it doesn't look like I was able to race him anyhow. So then he plays an idol on which is annoying really if I have a slow draw. So I take two and blast it away. So that I can actually do the things and cast stuff. Master of Appearing from me. No point to attack here. There was no way I was casting Master last turn, so I guess I wanted the creature in play so that I have more life draws. So he just suspends a Reef Bolt. I'm right at 11. With the Reef Bolt, that means already at 8. And that doesn't look nice at all. I lay down an Ink Moth Nexus. Attack with both guys. So, it's taking some damage. I have no idea why I thought that animating Nexus just to deal one extra damage uh, was a bad idea. Because Searing Blaze was still alive. No, 
the ball is trying me on the turn from Miracle I'm down to just four and he finishes me off with another ball is trying so yeah pretty nice draw from him triple ball is trying to head and I hit the slow draw and he's on the play so yeah even a lot of thinner so you can easily lose to burn in a very frustrating fashion once again two here still not siding because this was rather anti-climatic game and it was called so yeah I'm really hoping for fast to draw here so now I get to be on the play plus his draws in the previous game were really insane No Swiss Spears or Goblin guides, but he didn't need any of that. And I feel like if he would hit more creatures, I would have much better chance because turn three master return kind of stops like some of those beatdowns. And with such a dense straight burn hand, there was lit very little I could do. I really needed um, Twelve Scorch there. And even then, he would be able to just follow it away and still keep up the tempo. Yeah, and this time I hit a rather good hand. Start with a blink moth, delving jar, or in the top turn, the vault scourge, paying three life to cast it down to 18. Elvin Jar is like really superb here. Because if I hit like a second land Moth Sopal or something like that and just play a thing and suit it up to Vault Scourge who's in a really rough shape and Delvin Jar like is a one of like it's really amazing here because then even if he bolts my guy away I'm I can just sacrifice a Delvin Jar to save it. But because you already see that I have another land and a second uh, cranial plate in hand, and with uh, live Ink Moth Maxis, uh, my plan is to actually let him bolt away the Vault Scourge and not sacrifice the Delvin Jar so that I have protection for my. Ink Moth Nexus and just probably win in one turn via poison with double plating or just a couple of attacks. So yeah, I he I tank here for a while, but I kind of liked <coughs> the plan with the Ink Moth better in this game. But well, it's certainly debatable which one was better here. I think if I had different card in my hand saving Vault Scourge would have been correct here but he was just at 19 and with Vault Scourge alive I don't know what was better an interesting land and burn the green red fast land I suppose we kind of have to play it but I hate if it's like uh, turn for land and comes into play tapped and then you can't play your Atarka, uh, command for the win or on time destructive rivalry so I suppose I'm more of a fan like to not play fast lands and burn because you could end up in very tricky spots so I want from him not super scary at this point I'm at healthy 18 and there is no way he would raise me here uh, because I had an option of animating ink moth and sweeten it up but it would be just for um, 5 that's 2 turn clock it's probably there was no reason to play the second plating 
I feel like I took two extra damage from that now that I look at it. So yeah, I probably just needed to swing a couple of times with uh, equipped ink moth and just poison him in two turns. So that'll put away like any of his potential routes. This was what the play was still okay. The the problem with this plan is that to suit up both platens I would need to rip a land here or a Mox Opel or something like that. So I think that play was probably wrong if I wouldn't hit like a another mana source here. He would potentially have a chance to actually race me, especially since I did essentially nothing and took two damage with the second platen. Well you play you learn. You play, you learn. Then I drew a forecast. I was debating whether they could make sense at all to uh, cast it here. Because I needed to draw a land or an opal here. So another tricky spot. Because if I break, then this turn is horrible again. So yeah. Would have won this turn if I would go for uh, just a safer route. Well, not just safer, it seems like a, a better plan. So I did hit the Mox Opel, which made that, like, yeah, sure, I could put him to six poison here. And I took two extra damage from Mox Opel. Realized it later. No idea why I didn't see that here. As he would try to bolt it, I would sacrifice the Belgian jar to it. He would take two, but whatever, it was all about the poison. And because of regeneration, he wouldn't take any poison at all. Because it would be removed out of combat, so... Yeah, then some mistakes here. That's how you become better. And it's good that I'm actually narrating or commentating this um, post factum. So that I can actually see those mistakes and learn from them. That's a very nice value for myself as a magic player. So he would bother me, but his whole hand was like two skull cracked first turn and another spike, and it was all just to head, and there was no way he would burn me out this game, th uh, this turn. And he was for sure uh, poisoned next turn. I did all sorts of mistakes, but in, <laughs> in the end, it didn't matter. It's really stupid. Okay, sideboarding. So for me, I cannot board in a lot. Took out two Sigma Pass and one uh, Steel Overseer. Put in one Spell Pierce and two Spell Spades. Pierce is good, but Spell Spade is kind of odd against Burn. Um, he for sure bring, uh, brought in three Destructive Elder and three Smash to Smithereens. It's a bit paranoid sideboard, but I still kind of like it. Um, so it brought in additional Searing Blaze and two Lightning Helix and took out some good cards but the ones which don't really interact with me in case desperate times are there. So he took out all four Boris Trams and all four Raw Spikes from the deck. Uh, and I think it was as a ninth card uh, just one Squish Spear. Could be like one goblin guide, which is better to take out, but the upside uh, or, or every downside from goblin guide um, 
is very minimal against affinity with 17 lands, so I don't know. Might be take out when Swiss, uh, one guide is better than Swiss Spear. It's very close. But we definitely want to bring in all those nine cards. That's for sure. I thought about some other subbit cards, but these are really just the ones I needed. So on to the post cyber games. I probably want to buy a new playmat or just go to more GPs this season. Of course, there will be some sweet one from Copenhagen from Channel Fireball, but that will be like in one and a half month or even more than that. Yep. Didn't run particularly well with the PPTQ season. Was very close quite a few times, but oh well. But I hit rather good upstreak in terms of consistency. Top 8 or top 4 or very close to top 8 at different PPTQs and tournaments like that, GP trials and some cash competitive events. But I don't know. I like Affinity as a deck to play. It's quite interesting with a lot of DAP and just. It's sweet. It's not a dull deck at all to play. Quick start from here, Mountain into Goblin Guide, which drew me an Axis. My hand is not super fast. And I was on the draw here, so I don't know. It was rather average, but probably not good enough against Burn. I feel like a lot of people f uh, think that Affinity is totally fine uh, against Burn, but I don't know. Didn't really feel like that to me. You really need to hit. Um, Fast draws, well, the average draw from Burn, I would think, is much more stable and consistent than the one from Affinity. So, Swift Spear before combat damage, Bolting Mini, so Swift Spear would deal 2 damage. Goblin Guide drew me another Nexus, which is, I suppose, good to some extent, but now I'm so flooded and he has such a quick start here. I really don't know what I should do. Like obviously play a second land, then I can play Overseer Ravager and we would drum up with uh, half mana for Gale Blast to kill like one of his guys. So at worst I can reliably kill a Goblin Guide or something like that. And I'm already at 11, which is really bizarre. Because he bottled me uh, attack twice with the Goblin Guide, but 7 and 2 damage from Swift Spear. And it's all like after turn his turn 2, it's just in insane. So, Lightning Helix from he uh, him targeting my Ravager. I really have to think. Krovis trigger on the stack. Has his lightning helix. So, even though you would see me tanking for a while, but with a bit more practice of this matchup, the correct plan is pretty straightforward. Tap the Ravager with the drum, uh, with the Provost Trigger on the stack, because uh, I have Metal Craft anyway with the Ravager still in play. Um, deal for to Swift Spear, even if he would have um, a lightning bolt, let's say, or something like that, to boost uh, Swift Spear, the um, it would still die. Of course, he can probably in response like bolt again my Ravage, uh, 
stuff like that and keeps your switch speed but that's not great at all and there is no reason not to sacrifice um, Ravager to itself so that she doesn't get to gain 3 more life from the healers because I don't really lose anything from that I have no target to put the counter but so what um, through another run from the Goblin I'm down to 9 and then Green Willamancer another annoying card and one of the better cards Affinity has against uh, oh, and Burn has against Affinity. Tarkus Command is also bonkers in this matchup. Because I have Drawn it's, and Citadel, it's safe to play a Gloomy Void. I'm in such a clunky position that just playing another Nexus probably doesn't do anything. I'm not sure you could let me know in the comments. So I opted for Master Ethereum. We have Drum Up. Master is a 3-3 free, free creature here. Plus I would have an option of um, just using a drum to animate. Now I choose to make the ma Master as a 4-4. Because I spend 3 power. <coughs> And wait for it. I think you are probably seeing like what kind of shenanigans are coming up here. I block Goblin Guide. There is a, I think another land on top. Oh no, wait, what, what, what the hell did I just do? Did I just draw a Ravage off the Goblin Guide? <laughs> That's sick. Okay, sorry for that. That was my last match of the day, so I guess my brain's just switched off. Um, right, then he tried to finish off my master by using the green glowmancer here. So I, of course, animated the Nexus, and that would mean one, two, three, four. Hold on. How did we count that it would make Master as a 5-5? Five five? Ah, because it, it, it does count itself. Yeah, sure. Still weird. Still weird. I guess he thought I had two Citadels. Ah, oh, God. Okay. My turn, another Nexus, another Tron, Ravager. Mm. Yeah, I suppose after having pretty bad draws and really no fun games in this matchup, I started to make a bunch of mistakes. Okay, tapped Ravager and returned the, the test. Uh, Volskers and tapped one more land so that I wouldn't have to pay two life for it. <coughs> There's Reef Ball coming up and Green Lamancer after. I don't know, maybe I should have attacked here. It's kind of clunky. Because I have Ravager up to put counters on the Volskers in case he would go for killing it. Reef Ball to head, I'm at six. Sure, he can put me to down to four with the Willamancer. But then again, he took out the Boris Charms. It's kind of tricky. It would take up like two bolts to finish me off here. Uh, please let me know in the comments below. Did I totally mess up this game or not? It feels like I was miscalculating and misplaying everything I could. Okay, he suspends another Reef Bolt, but does it 
not really enough. I don't know what this plan is. Because Vosvis is already 2-2 two, two, thanks to Nasri repairing. And I sent back a cranial plating. plating. So, another Nexus, Mox Opal. But a lot of mana for anything. And a lot of colorful mana. To even equip at the instant speed. So, except Citadel and the Sick Nexus to lay down the plating. Then I think my best line was just to attack with a uh, Impact, uh, Ink Lock Nexus and uh, Vault Scourge. Equip the Vault Scourge and uh, keep up two black, two black mana. And Equip at instant speed in case he would try to kill any of my guys. Um, yeah, so equip the ball scourge, animated ink moth, which should risk two black cups to equip at instant speed. Plus, I can react with. Uh, sacrificing a lot of things to Ravager and then put in a bunch of counters from him onto one of those attackers so I have a lot of backups but I feel like my master resident shouldn't have leaked for so long but the way that this game is shaped up I don't think it would have mattered a whole lot even if he would kill it I think would be probably fine for me I think I was still winning by then um, even though I feel like I miscalculated and Nessie should have died yeah with Dundek you have to calculate I mean count up to 20 sometimes 15 if you get lucky with the matchup and with affinity you also need to count quite a bit, but it's all from di very different angles, which uh, and that all stuff makes uh, playing affinity quite a challenging task. I mean, playing it well, uh, to be exact. Obviously, playing Affinity requires a lot of practice. But even established Affinity players <laughs> would have value here by just laughing their ass off, watching my mistakes, and people who are not insanely familiar with Affinity or Burn would be able to learn from our misplays, even though we try to be calm and play in a very thoughtful manner anyways um, a friend of mine on the left even though he likes affinity a lot and on average he has fine results at the tournament plays with a but he also has uh, pretty much modern merfolks and I kinda like that deck more in general for certain tournaments for um, small meta games affinity is probably way better well technically there is an argument for uh, consistency and reliability of each of those three decks in my opinion Thorn on top to uh, on top of my deck, shown from the Goblin God on turn one. He's down to seventeen. I'm down to eighteen. Glimmer I went on turn top to a Mennonite. Maybe I can keep mana up for Galbraith here, or do something else. 
try to be more proactive and that's what I restarted and cast the signal test as of now this didn't look insane, super insane here second one from him so this way next time I could of course have tagged and stuff like that and I could always like just kill the goblin died next turn I'm showing glimmer void so that goes to him yeah of course he sacrifices that that here yeah going to 16 grim monster is pretty nasty so I feel more or less happy that I didn't spend the gal blast on the goblin guide because Grim Elementor is much better target for it here. Now we have to really tank for a while. 16 is not the end of the world, but it feels like I pretty much had to gal blast the man Elementor here with this kind of board so that's attack for just 3 damage which is still fine kind of making it this a balanced race he balls me on the turn so we're at parity both at 13 even though his deck will be sometimes faster than mine very depends of course like everything in this world it depends well a fine line from him is just to attack here the question is whether he had any other creature here doesn't look like he had it looks like skull crack and revelry to me on a chapter on top taking two down to 11 decided to cast an idol on here so that I can't possibly attack though I think I don't mind it he just sees my only uh, my man knight but that's probably something he wouldn't want to do I don't know Idolon was just playing more proactive here and because I would probably take damage from casting a bunch of things here it's pretty odd, but um, I suppose it was still good for me that he didn't cast uh, uh, Revelry here, I mean kept mana open to cast it, so that opened me the window of casting a Ravager. Playing on the top to go into 9 and cast Ravager, go into 7. Which is pretty dangerous. At least he uh, boarded out Boris Charms. So 7 is way better than 6 of health and I got block loose which could be pretty bad because of Ravager I would have at least Ravager and uh, Ornithopter to block next turn I'm not sure why I decided not to attack here probably fearing like a searing blaze or just that random balter he lets onto one of my creatures and so on well, there are a lot of things to <coughs> fear here, including smash, smash his smithereens. I don't know, but he was at 12, and by not attacking, I kind of just um, took away any chance away from me winning this game. 
the attacks with bows triggers when the Goblin Knight is a Mammonite. It's just nothing here. We have to really hope for the best here. But it's super hard, of course. And then I'd probably mess up this turn with my Thogger actions here. This kind of map is a bit tricky. Why do your wee numbers win? Where do you block? When do you sacrifice things? How many? What things you sacrifice to Ravager? How to play around Dogger instants? I expect hate and stuff like that. It's like, go for one it's up to Mem Knight and block his guys. Dan tried to provoke him by animating the Ink Moth Nexus so that I can actually maybe go for that route and put a bunch of counters on the Ink Moth from the Ravager and try to win this way. So, I blocked. Then I, before damage started by sacrificing Mem Knight uh, to Ravager and went on for sacrificing Ornithopter. He, n now he responds for destructive Ravager on the Ravager. And I'm not sure whether that was correct. Something tells me that if he would kill Ink Moth Nexus here, he would be totally safe, which seems hard to say actually. I think the boss here is relatively safe. No, he would go down to uh, 10 from the Reverie and either one would trigger and we would let this resolve first. So the Ravager anyways wouldn't go bigger from that on the top there, so in response to sacrifice another one. So three counters on the Ravager. Um, and then that sacrifice on the top there is still on the stack. So I have to think, do I continue here? So the, the option is to uh, sacrifice signal pass here. It's a bit dangerous with a couple of glimmer lords in hand. Because I will be sacrificing Ravager in order to take extra two damage from the Revelry. So I get the signal passed, then I before Revelry resolves, I sacrifice to put four counters onto the Nexus. Revelry fizzles. Plays another lance. We already know he has double Skullcrack in hand. My attack is not little here. I'm at seven. There's two two twos in play. I sort of have to play something here, shit, so that my glimmer voice don't go away. So I really have to hope for the best here. But we know this is not, it's not, it's not gonna happen. Plus like with two attackers, if I don't block them I go to, uh, go to three, which is also bad. Um, there is a um, possibility of trying to hatch by um, staying on defense with the Nexus, but then again, this means so that uh, uh, I would. Oh, yeah, I could just pay one here with the Glimmer Void animated uh, my glimmer voids wouldn't 
go away and then on history and now it's still in not exactly the good uh, access and still have one open and access to block or something like that but I decide to go down to five and attack with the nexus and screw that uh, and cast an M knight and he had a skull crack which is pretty much enough and that was his last card in hand so yeah there you go folks uh, stay tuned there is much more action coming up this week until later goodbye